All right, well, welcome back everybody. So videos have been a bit sparse here lately. They got tied up doing some videos for the other channel. Maybe y'all seen that and uh, that between work, really rainy afternoons and focusing on that, uh, that annual get together that we always do. Always do. Just kind of had to let this channel suffer for just a little bit. But I have finally run around today, had to go to like two different towns to find the lettuce, cabbage, and onions that we're looking for. So that's today's video. We're gonna plant some of this get our fall garden going. I'm gonna show you how some of this other stuff's already doing. Some of it's pretty surprising. So I'm kind of excited, you know, about fall gardening. Summer, summer garden did excellent. We've got a freezer slap full of vegetables. So I'm curious to see what raised beds are gonna do for fall garden. Uh, it'll kind of be a little bit of a first for me. I've always done some fall stuff in a little small raised bed, but never with this good a compost and set up the way that I am. So I'm gonna show you what we're doing real quick, give you a quick tour of the garden, and we're gonna get to planting. So I hardly ever do onions, but I figure why not? I've got so much space out here this year, I might as well. And they were very affordable. I think I paid like $3 a pound for onions and there's a huge amount in here. So I went ahead and got some of these white onions and some sweet onions. So I'm curious to plant some of these, see how well they do. Obviously they won't be ready till next spring or early summer. They take quite a few months to grow and produce. But since I've got the bed space, we're gonna go ahead and do it. What we're most excited about and what I've had to drive everywhere to find, this is our favorite lettuce. It's called Butter Crunch. So I finally found some of these plants. Next year, looking at the expensive things, although this wasn't that expensive, I'm gonna to try to start earlier and grow lettuce from seed. I use it always by the plant. So I'm pretty curious about doing seed. So we will do that in the future. So I got several of these butter crunch. I got several romaine lettuce. We eat a lot of salads, we love lettuce. And then I've got several of these uh, golden cross cabbages. That's something we always do in the fall. It's been extremely hard to find plants. I was talking with uh, one of the fertilizer store owners today and uh, you know seed store owners. They were telling me that there's been like three major uh, grow houses that's been damaged. One out in Texas and a few other places. I don't know if it was hurricanes and what the other problems were, but you can't hardly find plants. It's taken me forever to finally locate some. Usually I get cauliflower and broccoli, a few other things, can't find it nowhere. So this probably would have been the best year to start growing from seed. Uh, had I known I was gonna have this hard of a time, I would have done that, but lesson learned for next year. So we'll get all these in the ground in a minute. Let me show you how everything else is doing since it's been a while. Uh, since we've done a garden update. All right, so you may have remembered that I decided to grow corn for the fall. I'm not sure how this is gonna work out, but right now it's working out great. Other than some grasshopper damage, you know, that's the bad thing about planting. In the summer, bugs are everywhere. We'll see. Um, this may wind up growing tall enough and making corn before we get our first frost. So time will tell. My, my corn, in this compost at least, grows way quicker than what people are used to for producing. Uh, I think most people say 70 to 90 days, you know, you're, you're harvesting. Oh man, this past year it was like 50 to 60 days and I was harvesting. We are getting a cool snap toward the end of this week, which I'm excited about. I don't know if it's gonna stunt the growth on my corn, but as of right now, other than some grasshopper damage, it is growing like a weed. It's nice and dark green. So that's still good nitrogen rich compost. And I'm excited to see if I can get a little more corn here before fall. Time will tell. Peppers, I pretty much let them go, but they're still growing and looking good. You know, some are just going overripe. We've been picking little bells left and right, putting them in dishes. We just did fajitas and all kinds of other stuff. We're sticking them in the freezer as well. Um, but we've kind of let peppers go just because we got so many. Same story with the okra. You can see I have okra everywhere because I just finally quit and gave up. I mean, it's just, it won't quit producing. This has been producing for months and months and months. Back in the peak in the summer, I was getting like two and a half, three gallons a day off this one bed. Our freezer slapped full. We've done canned over 50 cans of pickled okra. We've been giving bags of this stuff away to everybody. Uh, every now and then we'll come out and just cut some off, you know, like this is a perfect eating size right here. But if we're gonna fry or uh, saute some for the night, but as of right now, I'm done. I need to cut these down or pull them up so they'll quit pulling nutrients out of my compost. I can save it for next year, but I don't know how many more months I could get okra here. 
I'm just kind of at the point I'm, I'm sick of it. It did so well, it's given me all I could ever ask for. So, I had a discovery. If y'all been watching the channel, you've seen that I absolutely struggled earlier this year with beans. I've planted them two more times this fall because I've always heard that beans will grow pretty good in fall. I could not get them to come up to save my life. Only two plants. Finally, one day, it, it dawned on me. Hey, you know, when I plant beans out in my food plots, a lot of them still sitting on the soil just because I put out so many in the way you disc them in. And they'll open up within a couple of days, grow, and uh, take off. So I was like, maybe I'm planting these too deep because everything you read online says bush beans and pole beans, plant them about, you know, an inch deep. Earlier this year, I tried a quarter inch, inch everything. So I, out of desperation, I come out there the other day, stuck a bunch of them in, and I mean, barely pressed them in the soil, almost left them uncovered. And as you can see, either one, the cooler weather, or two, planting those beans so shallow, one of the two things clicked. Now, every stinking bean come up to the point that I've got to come in here and thin them out. It may be too late in the year for beans to make. It's still a while before I realistically expect our first frost. But if these pole beans get to climbing and make some, great. If not, at least I learned some good lessons for next year. So that brings me to my next point. If you stumbled across this channel thinking that this is a DIY and I'm just going to teach you everything about gardening and homesteading, etc. Not at all. This is kind of just a recording or a snapshot, a picture, a video of our life. It's just our daily life as we figure things out. And I love experimenting like this, planting things when people say maybe it won't grow or trying different things because what I do is I keep a log in my phone, a little memo pad, and I'll take down notes what did work last year, what didn't work, and I'll keep experimenting until a few years down the road, we're gonna have this place figured out. And I'm gonna know exactly what to plant, when, uh, with exceptions. Mother Nature does throw you some curveballs. So if y'all see me doing something, you're wondering what the heck is this guy doing? I'm kind of playing, I'm experimenting. I've got the garden space and why not? You know, uh, like these seeds, for example, I think cost me $2 for a huge bag full. I can risk $2 to kind of come out here and play. And what if it winds up being warm as can be for the next couple months and I've got pole beans up to here. Could work out great. Same thing with the corn. So the garden, uh, if you watched, I come out here and weed eated it all out with my propane burner. Got some weeds starting to come back and grass, so it's time to do that again. I won't have to do this, but a couple more times before fall and winter's here and everything will then die off naturally. And what I'll do is come out here and layer this with mulch. I know I keep talking about doing that, but I'm waiting for it to cool off before I start cutting tree lines and fence lines and doing a whole bunch of mulching. Cause I just don't feel like going out there when it's burning up hot like it is today. You see some of these beds are getting taken over with weeds. So I'll pull the big ones, come out and propane weed. The small ones kill everything off until I don't see any more weed growth coming out of my beds. And I cannot wait to get this whole area layered in mulch. I think it's gonna look really pretty whenever that gets done. All right, so we'll quit, uh, we'll quit talking and I'll go ahead and start planting. This was my potato bed last year and I, I like the height of it. So I think I can fit just about everything I have in this bed. If not, I'll move over to one of these other beds. But this is where I'm gonna do my lettuce and see how many onions I can fit in here. I always like to have nice fluffy soil before I plant. I've already come out here and done this once a few weeks ago. It's not hard packed at all. I'm gonna go ahead and fluff it up before I plant everything. So I'll start out with my cabbages down here. They need the most room of anything. Then I'll move into lettuce, which I can get a little bit tighter packed, and eventually onions, which the spacing is very tight on them. I can fit a lot in such a small area.
And I forgot to mention, if you're new to the channel, we are in the northernmost part of Florida. There's only like one county left to where it goes right up to the Georgia line. So I forget which zone we're in, but we do get pretty heavy frost in the winter, usually. So if that helps you with how you're planting and how we plant. And as far as my cabbages go, I tend to do them about a foot and a half apart. Maybe just a little more. All right, well, looking at it, I probably went a bit wide with my cabbage spacing, but those plants do get big. Again, I have plenty of room out here. So I think we're just gonna stick with lettuce and cabbage in this bed. Lettuce, I do a much tighter spacing. It doesn't seem to have a problem. And we'll pick one of these beds over here to go stick some onions in. All right, as far as everything I read online for onions, because I just have never done a lot of onions, they say a minimum of four inch spacing if you're gonna do your onions for bulbs, which we are. We're not looking for green onion stalks as much as we are you know, some nice big bulbs next year. That's what we cook with all the time. So I'm gonna probably go somewhere between four to six inches. And everything I read said, try to leave the very tippy top exposed or don't cover it up more than about a quarter of an inch. Now I may be telling y'all something you already know, but you may be watching this for the first time ever on planting onions. When you get these little bulbs, the pointy top is exactly that, the top, that's what needs to go toward the sky. And typically you'll see a little bit of roots on the bottom. That's what goes down in the soil. And I'm gonna to try to leave that top just barely exposed, maybe covered hardly at all. I'm just going ahead and laying them out ahead of time. And then I'll come back and push them in. I've already done loosening this soil up. A lot of what I read said that onions like a really loamy, kind of loose soil. And actually in just a, I don't know, a few weeks, once these start developing and sprouting out really well, I'll come out here and start pulling some dirt back away. They say that kind of helps the bulb expand and grow. I read that on the internet, so it's gotta be true, right? And this would be a great point in the video for me to tell you, you grow onions a lot, especially in Florida. I'll take all the advice you can give me. Otherwise, we're gonna learn together. actually seeing quite a bit of insect damage which again is kind of what you get for planting late summer so I don't think I'm gonna thin these out much more just in case some of them wind up dying off due to you know insect bites or get ate down then I'll thin them out as they get a little bigger Well y'all, we're doing what we typically do in the afternoon, so hopefully you enjoyed the gardening video. We're down here just sitting and uh, seeing what's flying into the dove food plot to determine if we're going to have another shoot coming up. Definitely not seeing as many, but that's how it goes after you have a shoot opening weekend. They get educated, plus the birds that you take home for supper are now taken out of the pack, you know. So we'll see what's flying in. We may have another dove video coming up soon on the other channel. Like I said, hopefully y'all enjoyed the fall gardening videos. 
I'll keep y'all updated as that stuff continues to grow. And I know some of y'all been asking for cooking videos and for us to get back together and do something. So as we start harvesting some of that and some of the crops that we got from the summer garden out of the freezer, we'll do some cooking yeah. here coming up. So we'll do some more cooking videos if y'all would like to see that. I know there's a couple people that's requested that. So thank y'all so much for watching. Again, we truly do appreciate the support. I'll catch you on the next video.